What's going on everybody, C4, and welcome back to the channel. Happy Anthony Richardson Day, as we're both an hour or so away from the tight ends, wide receivers, and quarterbacks testing here on day three of the Combine. But I had to just watch my Arsenal game here, as Arsenal came from behind 3-2 to beat Bournemouth. Hyped! I felt like it was time to recap what we saw in day two of the Combine, where we saw some defensive backs go out there and do their damn thing. I got my winners, I got some losers, I got some I don't knows, and I'm going to start with an I don't know. We will be, obviously, in the background here using Raz.Football. It's the best measurement tool, the best resource, in my opinion, uh, for kind of trying to make sense of all this combined data. And, uh, well, we have Christian Gonzalez, who was undoubtedly the biggest winner, I think, in all of the combine yesterday for defensive backs because there was a logjam at the top of, you know, the corner market. It was really Christian Gonzalez, Devin Witherspoon, some people had Joey Porter Jr., to an extent, but it really it felt like those were like the big three, and you have to just kind of look at this combine, matches up with the tape, matches up with the production out of Christian Gonzalez, he he might just have solidified himself as corner one in this year's draft. For me, based off of tape, it was close, and I had a slight edge towards Devin Witherspoon, because I, I actually dug up a tweet from two years ago, I was watching just a random Illinois game, I think it was Illinois versus Nebraska, and I was just like, Never heard of this guy in my life. I was like, Witherspoon, who the hell is this guy? Never seen him in any, like, you, you can look at mock drafts two, three years in the future. Like, he was nowhere to be found. I was like, well, this guy looks pretty damn good. Since then, he's kind of been one of my guys. So maybe I have a little bit of bias there. But I think with how we tested here, we got to wait for the um, the pro day, Illinois pro day, to maybe get some testing numbers out of Devin Witherspoon. Because there are some concerns, size concerns. He's like 180 pounds. I, you know, you'd really like to see some data, some athletic testing data. Uh, especially in the case where you have, you know, maybe a 1A, 1B between Gonzalez and Witherspoon, and Gonzalez goes out and solidifies that he's a freak of nature type athlete. Uh, that's why we're starting this video with an I don't know, which is Devin Witherspoon. He made the thumbnail with a sad face because I really wanted to see him in test yesterday. In my opinion, he's the best tape out of any corner in this year's draft class, but corner is one of the few positions I think you really can put a lot of stock into the athletic testing numbers. A lot of times, you know, it's not necessarily a make or break you know you've seen you know the Richard Shermans and the you know the Josh Normans just because I know those guys had pretty shit common and they, they can make it in the league you know dogs if you will those guys with that dog mentality smart football players they, they can get by at corner but I do think as it relates to the draft top first second third round those are going to be the athletes and you really want to see Devin Witherspoon out there testing with everybody uh, it's just a bummer that he was unable to, and it, it, I think it was something with his hamstring, and they interviewed him on the field during uh, the NFL Network broadcast, and it sounds like he was uncertain to whether or not uh, he'd be ready for the pro day. So it might just be a day where he has a private workout, and he'll work out for everybody, uh, and we'll have to kind of wait for that. So that, that just sucked. It would have been awesome to see him out there. So from the players that actually were there, big winner is Chris Gonzalez, who I think it's fair to say right now is corner one in this year's draft class. Definitely a target for my Philadelphia Eagles. I think maybe teams like the Detroit Lions, potentially the Raiders, are going to be interested in Chris Gonzalez. Anytime you get a guy, six foot one, 41 inch vert, 4'3 speed, long as well. Like He just ticks off a lot of boxes. He's a smart football player, not just a pure athlete. Uh, transfer from Colorado. I'm sure Deion Sanders wish he, wishes he had a player like this. Actually, there was two. I'm going to talk about another Colorado transfer, Blackman, Makai Blackman, who went to USC. Man, primetime was just a couple years too late. Uh, looking at some pro comps here, we got Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, we'll take that one. Yeah, obviously, there's some other ones, Deontay Banks, who we're going to talk about in just a second there as well. But, uh, you know, he's in that mold. He's definitely not Jalen Ramsey. Like, Jalen Ramsey still to this day. I'd even put him ahead of Sauce Gardner if I'm, like, grading corners that I remember coming out. Because I remember when Jalen Ramsey was coming out, everyone's just like, yeah, he's either going to be an all-pro safety or an all-pro corner. He can play every defensive back spot versus Sauce, which is just, like, more of a lockdown guy. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't necessarily think Gonzalez is in that conversation. He's pretty close. Uh, it's, you know, he's If he was in last year's draft class, there's a shot he goes ahead of Derek Stingley. Um you know, if, if that's truly what the Texans were interested in, was the, the height, weight, speed on the outside, not necessarily Sauce. If Sauce still had that, uh, they might have fell in love with a, a, you know, a freak athlete like Christian Gonzalez here. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's, you know, I'm saying this, and I don't, don't want to always just relate it back to the Eagles, but I am an Eagles fan, and this is definitely a position we're going to be interested in. Christian Gonzalez would, I'd love that, at pick 10. 
Another winner, we get Deontay Banks from Maryland. He was one of the guys, haven't really done a deep dive yet. Haven't been able to see a couple broadcasts. Feel like that's why I do it. Like, that's why I never take myself uber seriously because I don't go in, into the deep depths of the internet to get all 22 footage. A lot of times I just watch the games play. And I'll like, all right, let's watch the broadcast with it. I'll get some chop ups, whatever's available on YouTube. I know um, Caddy Cuts on Patreon does a lot of cut ups. It's really good. Probably I'll recommend that if you're looking for all 22. But Banks is a guy I was kind of uncertain about. Like a lot of people, I was a top 50 player. Haven't watched a whole lot of Maryland. Uh, but boy, oh boy, he looked every bit of the athlete. Jacorian Bennett, I'm not going to talk about him today. He's more of a slot. Also tested very well. But Banks, 42 inch vert, third, you know, what is that? Almost. Was it the third fastest? He was one of the fastest, 4.35. It's just was standing at six feet tall, almost 200 pounds. We got some comps here. Byron Jones, Marshawn Lattimore. Like, you love seeing that. You love seeing those types. Again, not probably out of all the top corners now. And with this testing, he's going to go in that upper echelon. Don't, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to, to rattle off a bunch of stats or anything like that. Uh, I, do, I do know 38 tackles. Had in one interception, eight PBUs last year at Maryland. I, but I couldn't tell you. Is, is he going? I don't think he's going to the first round. Probably second round now. Solidified himself there. But I'm going to definitely need to do a little bit of deep dive. And you know a little bit more, Beyonce Banks. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Guy that I do know a lot about, Riley Moss. Man, he did it. He went out there and did it for, you know. You know what I'm saying? You like seeing this. You like seeing this, man. He's a, he's a you know, new age, new, like, Happy for him. Six feet tall, 39 inch vert, 445 track background. He's been one of the most productive corners in college football. He's been disrespected by saying he has to move to safety. It's the old adage, you know, you get a running back that kind of is kind of like Riley Moss. Like, oh, they're a fullback at the next level. You get a DB like Riley Moss. Oh, they're a safety at the next level. And I'm pretty sure I was another one. Uh, Del oh, I can't remember his name. DeLance or something like that. Uh, Cooper DeGene, Dion, whatever. They get another one there in Iowa. But Riley Moss, uh, I, you know, again, another guy. I don't know how high he's going to go. But I'm going to say probably day two after a contesting like this. We got some pro comps here of Eric Stokes. You could take uh, Murphy Bunting there. He's had a nice career so far for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But we'll go Stokes, made out of Georgia. One of my favorite corners coming out of that year. Uh, but, yeah, productive man, Riley Moss, 47 tackles. Only had one interception last year, but has 11 in his career at Iowa, 11 PBUs, two forced fumbles. Always felt like he made a bunch of clutch plays for Iowa. and I'm just happy to see that he tested very well. Definitely helped out his draft stock, and I think you could see him going third round, fourth round, somewhere in that range. Um, Julius Brents, Juju Brents at a K-State. A lot of people were kind of gassing up myself, hoping that he could be this year's Tariq Woolen. And the only downside is everyone's going to be kind of chasing that Tariq Woolen this year. Teams are going to probably be more open-minded to drafting the height, weight, speed corners after seeing the success of Tariq Woolen. And again, to relate it back to my Philadelphia Eagles, we got Sean Desai as our new defensive coordinator. And what defense was he a part of last year? The Seattle Seahawks with Tariq Woolen. So Julius Brents, Juju Brents, uh, got a lot of comps to that. And outside of the speed, you know, pretty close to Tariq Woolen. Six foot two, almost six three, two hundred pounds, forty one inch vert. He just jumped out the gym. Agility is outstanding for a big, long corner like that. Would like to see maybe a little bit better in the 40-yard dash time, especially if you wanted to get that true Tariq Woolen comp. But you're definitely getting a guy here, had a big year at Kansas State. 45 tackles, 3.5 TFLs, 4 interceptions, 4 PBUs. We're getting some pro comps here. Not the best. You're not really seeing a whole lot of a super you know, talent right there. Um, I don't even know who would be the best of that bunch. Cortez Allen, potentially. I'm not from, I don't even know who Cedric Curry is. But teams are going to be chasing the height, weight, speed corners, and Julius Brents is certainly going to be in that conversation. And I'm going to say, just based off of this, probably, you know, day two for sure. I don't know if I could say early day two, late day two. But uh, I've seen a little bit of him. Actually, he's probably been the guy this weekend that I've kind of done a little bit more of a deep dive in. He looks good, man. looks smooth, smooth operator. And I was actually kind of surprised by the agility because usually get these guys, man, they're stiff. They can't get their hips turned around. And the fact that out in space, he was fluid, a fluid mover, um, that definitely helped him out. So, I mean, again, teams trying to hit on that Tariq Woolen wave. Could potentially look at overdrafting Julius Brents, but he have definitely helped himself out here today. The most productive corner in college football, Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi State, had himself a day. If you can get over the fact, 166 in the weight. Explosion, I mean, those aren't bad numbers. Those are acceptable. But running the 4-3-5, 
He needed to run that if you're coming in at the combine at 166 pounds. We got some pro comps. Champ Bailey, DRC, you got Greedy Williams in there. But when you look at the numbers, man, the production for Emmanuel Forbes, he's going to be one of those guys that if he slips, like right now he's kind of been mocked in the cusp of like first round to mid-second round, somewhere that range, which is still a decent draft grade for him. But it's like one of those things, if he ends up being an absolute baller, it's going to be one of those guys you look back in hindsight and be like, why did we overthink it? Last year, he had 46 tackles, 6 interceptions, 3 pick 6s, 10 PBUs. In his career, 14 interceptions in 3 seasons at Mississippi State, and he has 6 defensive touchdowns. He is the most productive, and like, I, I, you know, he's, he's definitely, out of all the corners we're talking about, the overthink it corner of the draft. I think he should go first round. I think with that time... Unless you just completely don't th he think he's going to get bullied in the league at 166 pounds. Uh, Forbes, you know, he's an outside corner. He's a starting corner in today's league. So definitely helped himself out. We got another corner that's being in that upper echelon of like, some people might even think he's the number one corner in the class. I personally don't think so, but I do think he's a first rounder. We have Joey Porter Jr. out of Penn State. Six foot two. Helped himself out with a nice bench press here today. I actually think that just went live. Uh, 446 in the 40 for a big corner. That's not a bad time at all. Great testing in the broad jump uh, for some pro comps here. AJ Terrell is an outstanding comp for him. I feel like that's that's kind of where I was actually going. He was on my short list of comps when I was getting ready to, uh, to to type this up for the old Patreon. Go check out my Patreon if you want to see my draft content coming this coming week. But Joey Porter, uh, very aggressive core. That's kind of the reason why I've been a little worried from the standpoint of like he might be a flag magnet in the NFL, but if you are looking for a very physical corner that tested out pretty well for an, from an athletic standpoint, Joey Porter Jr. is going in the first round. I think, you know, I've always kind of had Witherspoon and Gonzalez firmly ahead of him as one and two. He's kind of in that mix of like, he could be my third corner in this year's draft class, but he, there's definitely a really good player there. And I, and I kind of see the way that he's played at Penn State. I think he's going to be one of those guys that still has his best football ahead of him. So there is a ceiling there for Joey Porter Jr. to continue to develop. But he had a nice day. Definitely arrows up for Joey Porter Jr. Another one of the first-round corners that have been here, you know, here for the minute, in the discussion for a minute. We have Cam Smith from South Carolina putting up a nice score there. Six foot one. You got great in the uh, the explosion grade there with his vert and broad. Four four three is good enough for the 40-yard dash. But kind of like, you know, Forbes. A little bit slight, 180 pounds in that. You know, Forbes, Cam Smith, Devin Witherspoon were, yeah, there's a little bit of weight concerns. Are these guys going to get bullied the next level? I, I you know, the, I've seen enough corners talk about weight not really mattering. And then if you just want to generally look at like, well, you're not going to be able to carry that weight at the next level. You might be able to get away with it at college. Different but similar positions. Devontae Smith for the Philadelphia Eagles. That was his overwhelmingly biggest knock was he's not going to survive in the league because of his size. And he's been outstanding for the Philadelphia Eagles. Absolutely outstanding. I'm not going to say he's the best wide receiver from that class, but I think he's right there with Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddell. He's going to get 1,000 year, thousand yards here as a wide receiver, too. He was outstanding this season for the Philadelphia Eagles. Makes ridiculous sideline catches, and he, he's kind of put to rest all of those size concerns because he was such a lightweight in college. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a knock. I'm not going to personally uh, really hurt any of these guys' draft stock or how I think they're going to do in the league because they're you know under 200 pounds or under 190 pounds. Uh, for Cam Smith, we got a DRC comp. We'll stay with that. We'll always, we get these comps. We'll give them the more favorable ones. And Dominique rogers Camardi had a hell of a career in the NFL. So let's, uh, you know, Cam Smith definitely solidified himself as another, I think, maybe late first round, early second round corner. It's just, it's an awesome year to need corners. And when you look at it from a Philadelphia Eagles standpoint, we need multiple corners. There's probably a bunch of people watching this who are saying, I would be perfectly fine with my team drafting two corners in this year's draft class. This is the year that you want to do it. A man that probably out of all the corners had the most riding on testing well, and he did he did a good job, is Keely Ringo out of Georgia. 6'1", 207. From a, from a size standpoint, height, weight, speed, he was supposed to be the guy. Definitely disappointing in the explosion. Definitely thought he'd have a bigger vertical than that. But the straight line speed, 4'3", in the 40-yard dash. He's your project corner. And I, I kind of... The tape was not good this year. He got picked on. I just, I literally, you, I've seen, like, you know, I've seen the good games and the bad games. But the bad, it's like the good games were solid and the bad games were really bad. Like that LSU game where he got absolutely picked on and like the LSU's starting quarterback got knocked out. They put their backup quarterback in and they're still targeting Keely Ringo. And this was when he was like kid census number one quarter uh, for this upcoming draft class. So, you know, he helped himself out. And I, I think like when we look at the Raz here, what do we got? 
eh, you don't like see a D Milner up there. I think when you look at Keely Ringo, I think he's Tariq Woolen, but you're not getting the value. I think if Keely Ringo wasn't at Georgia, if you saw Georgia State instead of Georgia, he'd be like Tariq Woolen. He'd be like the height, weight, speed project guy you get in the fourth, fifth round. And if he plays well, so be it. But Keely Ringo, because he comes from Georgia, now you're going to be talking, is he going to go in the first round? Is he second round? It's just he's going to be Tariq Woolen. As a prospect, I'm not going to say Keely Ringo is going to get six interceptions to be defensive rookie of the year conversation, but he's going to be the guy from a from a stylistic athlete prospect standpoint. He's going to be a Tariq Woolen that you get out to overdraft because of where he went to school. That's not necessarily a bad review of Keely Ringo. I saw the you know I, the little Eagles were talking to him. If we get him pick thirty, I wouldn't hate it, and I I don't know how much I would love it. But there's definitely, anytime you get an athlete like this, if you can refine their game, he has a lot of tools and traits that you cannot teach. Uh, a couple surprises. I got three corners left that are getting in the positive. Really, I, there wasn't a whole lot of negatives that I had for the corner room. I think all the corners generally showed really well. And even the corners that didn't test particularly well, uh, I was actually able to watch the drills yesterday. I wasn't able to on day one. Uh, a couple guys definitely stood up. We got Corey Trice from Purdue, 6'3", 206. Um... 34 tackles, 2 picks, 10 PBUs. Played some safety as well at Purdue uh, with that size. 4-4-7 is a good time. Uh, just interesting. You got, you know, look at those comps. Patrick Sertan, Antonio Cromartie. You always love seeing that. He's a guy I'm going to have to do a little bit more homework on. Honestly, I thought he was a safety. Last time I remember, like, knowing him as a prospect, he was a safety. So he made that switch to corner. I'm going to have to take a little bit of a look there. But uh, very good athlete. Someone definitely need to consider uh, late day two, day three, early day three. We have Darius Rush, the corner out of South Carolina, converted wide receiver. I know he tested pretty well with all the, you know, the MPHs and stuff like that at the Senior Bowl. So a lot of people were expecting him to do well here today. 6'2", 200 pounds, 4'3", Very, very fast. Still, I believe, learning the position. Pro comps, you got, uh, obviously, you know, someone like Chris Restry, who was ridiculous, like 6'4", ran a 4'3", at his pro day at Kentucky. Um, but a little bit of unknown, but, you know, everyone is going to want the next Tariq Woolen, so I'm kind of trying to highlight some guys that could be that guy. And I think someone like Darius Russ's case, you're not going to have to pay a premium pick for him. Probably going to be looking third, fourth round, somewhere in that range. And the best corner that didn't test the best, in my opinion, was Makai uh, Blackman. Colorado transfer, went to USC. Hell of a year at USC last year. 66 tackles, 3 interceptions, 12 PBUs. Didn't test the best, came in a little bit undersized. It's not a brutal testing, though. Like, you know, that's that's probably just a little bit below league average. For the pro comps here, we got Jack Jones, who had a hell of a rookie career. So far, rookie career. Rookie season. If you like, it's been his career so far with the Patriots. But I thought he actually looked the most impressive during the on-field drills for me. He was a guy that I took note of. I was like, man, he caught the ball smooth. A smooth mover in space. So uh, definitely a guy. Could be a value. Don't sleep on him because he doesn't have the best RAS or didn't test. Didn't run the best. Not the heaviest in buck seventy eight. Uh, he looked very impressive. I think there's a player there for sure. I uh, got two safeties I want to highlight. Overall, wasn't a, wasn't blown away by the safeties. But first up, we got Daniel Scott uh, out of California. Very high RAS. Tested incredibly well. Six feet tall, 210. 22 reps on the bench press. 445. Great agility grade. Elite explosion grade. Pro comps here. We got Javon Holland, Juan Thornhill. Both those guys have been very solid so far in their NFL career. Scott, 85 tackles, three interceptions, four PBUs. Two forced fumbles last year at Cal, so very productive. He has production to match the athleticism. And in a class that there's a lot of uncertainty for the safeties, right? Top safety, you know, Brian Branch is kind of like a DB safety. I, I consider him a safety right now, and we'll get to him in just a second. You know, Tonio Johnson from AM. Jair Brown, it's not a consensus safety board right now. So someone like Daniel Scott can definitely help himself from this combine and maybe you know jump a couple guys, leapfrog a couple guys ahead in the picking order here for the safety. So very impressive day for Daniel Scott. Actually, he looked pretty good during the drills as well. I got a little Canadian bias here. We're going to show off Sidney Brown. I can't wait to see Chase Brown test with the running backs, but Sidney Brown getting a very nice 9-6-3 Raz. Uh, outside of size concerns, and I, you know, he kind of helped out with the 23 bench, so he's just freaking jacked. 40 inch vert, 447 in the 40 yard dash. You got the Troy Polamalu. That's all. That's how far we're gonna go. Let's actually just scroll up here. That's the only comp you need to see. Troy Polamalu, the Canadian at Troy Polamalu. I love seeing Sidney Brown. Massive season at Illinois last year. 60 tackles, six interceptions, seven PBUs. Made himself some money here today. Uh, can't wait to see how his career kind of plays out. So congratulations to him. 
We have our second and final I don't know. Devin Witherspoon was our first I don't know just because he didn't test. Brian Branch, I, you know, he wasn't a guy on film that looked like one of the freaks that Alabama recruits in terms of athletic ability. I thought from a comp standpoint, he looked pretty similar to, you know, Minka Fitzpatrick. I, I, we'll actually do a little comparison here. See how, from an athletic standpoint, how Brian Branch lines up with Minka. I still think he's the best safety in this draft class. Would, it's just, it's an I don't know from a standpoint. Like, I didn't think he was this average of an athlete, if you will. He's, you know, his overall grade's going to get hit by the size concerns. But 458, it's not bad. You're not going to hinder that. But, you know, the vert's not good. Uh, for the actual comps here, we got... Not a lot of great players, to be honest with you. But I actually want to see... I'm going to do a little comparison here. Brian Branch. I want to see Brian Branch compared to Minka Fitzpatrick. Can't spell it all. Super early in the morning. Boom, let's go. I think, obviously, Minka's going to go uh, and be a pretty higher. And, yeah. I mean, even then, though, at least Minka wasn't an elite athlete. Similar, similar builds, about 10 pounds heavier for Minka Fitzpatrick, faster, the 4-4-6, like, you know, you, you, Brian, you can't, this is, this is a perfect example of, like, you can't write off a guy, because he just had an average, because he didn't have a bad combine, he just kind of had an average combine. Brian Branch, 90 tackles, 14 TFLs, 3 sacks, 2 picks, 7 PBUs last year at Alabama. Does it all, jack of all trades, which reminds you of Minka. But I think the difference is I thought Big Fitzpatrick was the type of player that played almost like a Jalen Ramsey, where like I think he could play everywhere in the secondary. I think you could put Minka in the slot. I think you could put him outside a corner. You could put him in either safety. He's going to do the job. I feel like Brian Branch is kind of that, but you're not going to put him on the outside. It's more of like you can put him in the slot, have him at money backer, have him play either safety spot. And the athletic testing shows why you probably wouldn't want to put him on the outside as a true can play every single position in the in the in the secondary. But overall, just an I don't know for Brian Branch. Wish he tested a little bit better, but he's still, in my opinion, the best safety in this year's draft class. I got three negatives, three losers. First up is Clark Phillips III, the corner out of Utah, who is very productive. If I, 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 off the top of my head, don't know if there's any other person I would put ahead of him for the best nickel in this year's draft class. But if you come in at 5'9", 184, you want to see like you want to see an athlete. Right? That's what you're kind of looking for. And unfortunately, did not get that bad vertical. I mean, four five one's not bad. You know, you're not gonna like the, the speed, you're not really gonna hammer him too hard about that. But like these ones here, especially for a slot. It was tough. It was a tough day. I don't know. He's, he's gonna be one of those ones though, because of the bad testing. Maybe he gets slept on a little bit because he's and also he's gonna get slept on because he's not an outside corner. But still, 24 tackles, 6 interceptions, 6 PBUs, 2 defensive touchdowns last year for Utah. He's been playing since a true freshman. Very good football player. Better football player than athlete. So he's, he's one of those guys I wouldn't overthink. He's going to go to the Patriots and be an, you know, an elite player. That's what's going to happen there. We have Jair Brown. I had him as my second safety. I'm not so sure. This is, one of the, this is probably so far the guy that I was shocked. Like, it didn't match up whatsoever with what I saw. I thought he was going to be testing very well. I thought we are going to get 4-4-5. I thought we are going to get 40-inch vert. He's an absolute playmaker. Luckily, he did play very well during the drills. I thought he did actually stand out during the drills amongst the safety group. But this was not a good day. Uh, hopefully, he can improve these numbers at Penn State's Pro Day. Maybe they got a fast track there that can help him out. Um, I mean, Tashawn Gibson's not a bad cop. He's been in the league for a minute. But def I would say overall, my most disappointing player yesterday, in terms of my expectations for them, was definitely Jair Brown. Definitely saw a better athlete than uh, what we what we got from a testing standpoint. The last negative was another one of my sleeper safeties. Thought I, th this one here, not as much as Jair Brown. But we got Jamie Robinson, the safety from Florida. Luckily, the bench press kind of helped him out there. But 4-5-9, I thought he was quicker. He's an absolute dog. Very good player. Uh, player that's, you know again, going in, in that mold of a better player than an athlete. I just thought he was a little bit more of an athlete than this. Pro comps aren't the best at all. But J.B. Robinson, dog. Man, absolute dog. Does it all. Did it all for Florida State. 99 tackles, 5 TFLs, a pick, and 5 PBUs last year for Florida State. But uh, much like Jair Brown, I just, I just thought, generally speaking, the safeties were underwhelming yesterday. Kind of similar to day one, where it's like, all right, the D-line group was a bunch of freaks. And then when the linebackers went, a little disappointing. Day two, corners looked outstanding. Safety's not so much. So it's, it's kind of 
showing on full display while eliminating you know the massive portion of tape and breaking down players the strengths and weaknesses of this draft class linebacker and safety are not particularly great and it's, it's not surprising that the, the combine results kind of reflect that a little bit but uh, overall very happy as a as a cornerback hungry team and I think a lot of people out there that are going to be looking for maybe that next outside corner maybe even a starting slot corner lots of great players to get excited for as we ramp up towards the 2023 NFL Draft. Let me know who was your favorite corner that you saw yesterday. Who was your big winner? Who was your big loser? And we got about 20 minutes until day three starts, a.k.a. Happy Anthony Richardson Day. Cannot wait to see him go out there, hopefully crush it. Uh, and I might be back maybe, Might be back tonight uh, recapping day three. It's a big-ass day, so maybe we'll be out on Sunday. But uh, I will see you guys before too long. Thank you very much for watching. It's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. I'll see you back in the next one. Until then, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.